All right, with it being one o'clock, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, first and foremost, thank you all for taking the time to join us this afternoon. My name is Dane Christensen, and I'm an account executive at eCapital Advisors based here in the Twin Cities. Uh, for today's webinar, I'll kick things off with some slides. So our demo specialist, host Sai and Scott Wolf, will be the ones walking you through today's hospitality-focused demo of Workday Adaptive Planning. Now, I won't read this whole thing, but just as a formality, we start each demo with our safe harbor statement, which in summary states that in a more formal evaluation of adaptive planning, any purchasing decisions should be done so based on products and features currently available today versus any forward-looking statements on products and features coming soon or in the works. And our agenda for today's webinar is pretty straightforward. We'll highlight the relationship between eCapital Advisors and Workday, briefly discuss where adaptive planning aligns with the priorities of today's CFO, and then dive into the demo itself. Focusing first on eCapital Advisors, so we are one of four Platinum Preferred Partners hand-selected by Workday to help sell and implement the adaptive planning solution. So the adaptive solution itself is owned by Workday, but in a more formal evaluation of adaptive planning, we would be your point of contact and ensure you're up and running smoothly. And I'm guessing some of these logos look familiar here, but the main takeaway here is we scale our services to fit your business and adjust accordingly as your business expands. So it doesn't matter what your employee headcount is or what industry you fall in, we tailor our approach to fit your needs. In the last two years, eCapital has um, done 65 implementations and counting. In addition to eCapital Advisors, it's of course worth mentioning Workday. So Workday recognized the success of adaptive planning and in 2018 acquired them. Uh, Workday has poured an astronomical amount of investment into the solution since, with the headcount of the adaptive planning development team typically being more than entire company headcounts for most competing solutions out there. Uh, the adaptive customer base at this point has grown to nearly 6,000 customers with a 97% retention rate. And as mentioned toward the beginning here, eCapital has been in the consulting space for over 20 years and was hand selected to be a platinum for partner. And we at eCapital uh, drink our own champagne, so to speak, being adaptive planning users ourselves. Uh, the majority of pain points we hear from CFOs when evaluating adaptive planning is how much of their FP&A efforts today rely on what's available in Excel. And Excel is useful to a certain degree, but companies are finding it was never designed to really carry the weight of their planning and reporting needs on its own. In fact, Microsoft themselves, the literal creators of Excel, use adaptive planning, but companies relying on Excel are spending countless hours building their sheets and reports manually and extending their planning and reporting cycles by several days, if not weeks. Uh, the insights they are able to extract are limited and not nearly enough to successfully run their businesses. The level of timely and detailed customization they're looking for simply isn't there with the time, staffing, and budget available. And for what data is available, teams in different departments are siloed and have limited visibility, which makes collaboration and alignment on key metrics far more difficult. And turning our focus to the modern day CFO, here are highlights from the Gartner study released back in January. In addition to what I highlighted on the previous slide, you can see right out of the gate here, those first three check marks being top of mind priorities for CFOs, particularly in the SMB space. The driving factors behind those three check marks would be stemming from the limitations of an Excel based environment. And as we look down the list here with automation and analytics being focal points, the main takeaway is that CFOs are looking ahead with 2023 and beyond in mind, realizing the capabilities of their current FP&A tech stack will not keep up with their anticipated growth, and that it's time to invest in more robust functionality that will ultimately save them time, money, and headaches as they continue to expand. And as listed in the description for today's webinar, here are the four main benefits of adaptive planning that we'll be highlighting in today's hospitality-focused demo. I won't read these word for word, but ultimately, customers are adding up the billable hours otherwise spent on their day-to-day -day manual efforts and seeing astronomic cost savings there. 
they're completing reporting cycles in a fraction of the time they're used to. Having a centralized single source of truth makes housing data in several different systems a thing of the past. Uh, previously, silo teams are completely on the same page with their collaboration efforts. Forecasting is as customizable and frequent as you want it to be. Uh, what if scenarios for scenario planning are done on the fly with data that updates in real time with in-memory tech? So with that, I know it was a lot, but we'll shift our focus now to the demo. And I'll quickly touch on what we'll cover just so you know what to expect here. Dashboards will be the first thing you see when you log in. Data integration will be how your data from Excel and your ERP will get into adaptive. We'll touch on the various budgeting and planning modules. And finally, we'll end with reporting. And there will be time at the end for questions, but Osai and Scott are more than happy to answer any questions on the fly as they pop up. So definitely feel free to enter in today's chat function, anything top of mind as it comes up. Uh, otherwise, with that, I will end my screen share here, hand the baton off to Osai to introduce herself and then be able to give Scott an opportunity to introduce himself as well. Perfect. Thank you, Dane. Osai Garwal, nice to meet all of you. Um, I'm going to be one walking you through the demo, but I joined eCapital Advisors um, two and a half years ago in this pre sales role prior to coming to eCapital. I actually spent about a decade in just a variety of FPA roles, have also um, used Adaptive Insights prior to the Workday acquisition as a senior analyst, and loved the product so much that I wanted to join eCapital Advisors and um, help um, sell and um, um, help others imagine how um, your day-to-day -day life can change by having a solution like Workday Adaptive Planning. And with me today, I have Scott Wolf as well, um, our implementation uh, senior implementation consultant here, and I'll give him a chance to say hello. Yeah, thanks, Yusai. Uh, Scott Wolf, I've been with eCapital now just over three and a half years, um, leading some of our adaptive implementations. Um, I am based out of Chicago. I'm in, on the call here today to answer any implementation related questions or any of the more technical questions that may come out of today's call. Perfect. Thank you, Scott. So I will start sharing my screen. And as you have questions, don't hesitate. Put them out into chat. Scott will keep an eye on the chat as well and answer them along, we go, uh, along as we go. And then, of course, I'll be stopping for questions uh, as well. So with that, I am sharing my screen. Um, Dane, thumbs up. Everyone can see my screen. Good to go. OK, perfect. So for those of you who have not seen adaptive uh, work, adaptive planning before, I just want to take a minute or two here, get you all introduced to the screen um, and know where I'm kind of pivoting and navigating. So you can all follow along and then we'll take uh, a deep dive into uh, dashboards. That's where we'll start as per our agenda. So it is 100 percent cloud based. You can log in from anywhere on the web um, if you're out and about traveling or anywhere and you need to log in, approve something, make a change to a version, to a budget, you can absolutely do that via your mobile device as well. It will always automatically resize to the size of screen that you're using. Right now in this demo environment that you see, demo model, demo data here, we are logged in top right hand corner as a power user, as a business analyst, or if you're the director of FP&A, uh, whatever your role is, uh, as you log in, you will always see your own self up here at the top. And as you have additional users within the organization using your model or making some inputs, you will always see the other users in the model while you're in here. So it is multi-tenant phase. Next to our login on the top right-hand corner and our, uh, next to the profile is this little question mark. I always like to highlight this because I use it almost every day if I need to for any specific demonstrations. It is a knowledge center, comes with the solution. Um, you can search for anything you may be looking to get a quick refresher on, how to put a dashboard together, or how to write a formula or a report. It is always available to you here via the question mark. You can think of it almost like a Google search with guided click options as well. Next to the question mark is your version toggle. Right now we are on our budget version, but as you spin up your unlimited number of scenarios and versions and doing your rolling forecast, you can easily pivot between those um, on the top right hand corner while you're on dashboards or on any of your sheets. So let's just stay on, on, on the budget version here. 
for our example. And then last but not least, on your left-hand side under the W Workday icon is your access to the navigation menu. Quick highlight without walking through every single item on here is we're looking at a comprehensive list of items available to us because we are that power user. What that means is we have full security rights to the entire model, or we can even go behind the scenes where all the magic happens and your model gets created, such as your modeling, uh, administration, integration, formulas, and processes and workflow. These two together kind of make up the area behind the scenes, whereas that power user, you can create a unique process for any end users to come in and input their budgets. It could be a marketing user, it could be another sales user, it could be a specific property manager who you want to be able to come in here and put in their budget for their specific required property or event or whatever it may be. So that magic happens right here within workflow. So with that, let's take a quick deep dive into dashboards. So upon my login, I'm presented with dashboards, but really you can be presented with anything upon your immediate login. It could be a sheet, could be a report, wherever you want to land right away when you log in. Now, just to give you a little bit of taste of the art of the possible here, I am on my dashboard. I have a summary tab here. I have individual different widgets where I'm tracking my occupancy percent, my revenue per each available room that I have, perhaps my average rates, any type of KPIs metrics you can think of that you are tracking today in your business or want to track and aren't able to, you can track them here with Adaptive via your dashboards, visualize them as long as your data is available for us to connect to and bring into Adaptive. We can create those um, widgets around that data. You can do waterfalls here as well. I know waterfalls can sometimes be time consuming to create in Excel, but drag and drop functionality here in Adaptive, select the type of widget, drop it in, and then bring in the accounts you wanna see on your waterfall. I have my EBITDA here as well. And then in case you're doing some scorecarding, uh, you can do scorecarding as well. So in our top blue ribbon here are our dimensions. My example here is showing time, level, and currency. A uh, level here is just an adaptive term. All this really means is your organizational hierarchy. So however you have that organized is what this structure will look like for you. This is where the customization will come in, where we take a look at your organizational structure and build that here within your, your hierarchy. Now, let's say I am um, an executive and I have access to all of my uh, properties, departments, cost centers, profit centers, you can easily pivot from your um, dimension in your blue ribbon. And now we're seeing everything for property one uh, for, for all of our widgets here dynamically update. So easy to use, self-serve, find the answers on the fly without having to wait, being able to make those business decisions on the fly when the data is available at your fingertips at a visual, uh, in, in a nice visual. Scrolling back down to, um, actually let's pivot back up to our total company here. One more concept to talk about. Again, if you're, you want your executives to be able to, um, to be able to um, drill through your data, to be able to find more and more information. All of these are not just static pictures of your data, but you can actually use them to drill through, finding out more information, just like we did from our top ribbon. Where did this data come from? Where does this data point got built? All of that information with a simple drill through. Let's say we want to understand on our income for March of 2018. Excuse that this is a 2018 model, but it is a demo model. Uh, we have $4.6 million here. Now, just to click within your widget allows you to drill through to bottom level of data. I am the CFO and I'm interested on well, which property is driving the most of that um, $4.6 million. Now we can keep drilling down on, it looks like it's within our owned properties. And then we have also our franchise properties. That's how my hierarchy here is created. Now let's keep going one more level, all the way down to the individual properties. Looks like property three at 381,000 is contributing the most for the month in our income. Now we can keep going, keep asking those questions, or we can also go into this explore data functionality. This will become your best friend because the explore data always allows you to go behind the scenes of where the data point comes from. Here's our 381,000 again. 
On your right hand side, you can see your path, your drill through path. We can also see here in the bottom section, all the revenue pieces that are making up that 381. It looks like the majority of it is coming from our room revenue of 375,000. Then we can also follow it via this hyperlink sheet where the planning for that data point is done. So if we take a step back, imagine your executives being able to do the simple drill through or maybe not even just your executives, just your regular users, your property manager users, your, your analysts drilling through to that data and understanding where it comes from and being able to analyze it on the fly. So here's our room revenue that we just drilled down on and then we can see it exactly of how that data point is built up. So you're presented with something that almost looks like an Excel spreadsheet where that data point is built. So a couple more things to mention while we're on dashboards, and then I promise we'll move on. Top right-hand corner here, uh, you can always take this into presentation mode, live interact with them in your leadership meetings. No need to copy and paste them into PowerPoint um, as they have a very nice presentation format. And then we also have the Office Connect, which we will touch on towards the end of our uh, demonstration here today. The Office Connect is more used for uh, board-style presentations but can also use for any type of ad hoc reporting. But just wanted to highlight that this is available to you here, as well as a snapshot scheduler where you can schedule snapshots on a specific frequency to really any users in the organization on a schedule of your choosing. So with that, let's pivot over into, um, into planning. And before we do uh, anything on planning, we'll go behind the scenes here together and set us up with a new uh, what if scenario. We'll, we'll walk through an example of doing uh, some kind of a scenario plan. We'll make some adjustments. Uh, I'll walk you through how driver base planning works um, by using sheets and, and driver sheets. And then we'll end with reporting. So uh, let's hop over to that. Um, behind the scenes, the admin console is, um, you can access via your modeling menu. And the admin console is for your power users. Our consultants here at eCapital Advisors will have a recorded training session. Um, I may have not mentioned this uh, while we were on dashboards, but we do recorded training sessions with you as we go through the project. When we um, go through dashboards, if you choose to have dashboards as part of your build, We'll walk you through model management, making sure that at the end, when we're done with the project, that when we go our separate ways, that you're fully capable of navigating through this menu. Same applies to doing web-based reports, Office Connect reports, and then formula building as well. We'll record those sessions, make sure that you have them in case you ever have um, a new employee that joins the company or someone's leaving and you have some turnover, you always have those recorded assets. Uh, for yourself to use. So in the very first box, what you see here is a version in time. That's where we'll go and spin up that new scenario. So let's just imagine your executives have come to you. You're the senior analyst or you're the director of fp &A, and you have been asked, what if we change our housekeeper rates because it's so hard to find housekeepers or what if we need to hire additional housekeepers because everyone is traveling, we're fully booked. Whatever that situation may be, um, uh, even if it's not a housekeeper, it's, it's something else in your business. So other things are changing. You have additional events, you have more people attending, um, coming to the zoo or, or um, um, any other type of activities that are happening in your business. So here I have my budget. I have, I have a few versions. I have my actuals. I have my budget version. This budget version, imagine that this is your base pass at your, uh, the first pass of your budget. And we're gonna take that carbon copy of this budget. Now we could do rolling forecasts as you bring in your actuals from your ERP. Um, it, we may not have talked about this while we were on dashboards, but any type of ERP you have, your Net suites, your sales force for your sales and CRM data. Adaptive does have a pre built connection to connect to those and bring in your data. But even if you have some kind of a boutique ERP, um, there are many different ways for Adaptive to connect and bring in your data. So 
as we connect and establish that connection to bring in your data, you bring in your next month's worth of data, you can do your rolling forecast the exact same way we're gonna do this what if scenario here. But the only difference that we just have to identify the starting months that you are forecasting out. So let's leave this carbon copy um, with the name what if. You can give it a short name, a description, you can lock versions. Once you lock them, I'll give it a little lock icon. No one can go in there and make any more adjustments. You can also adjust the view from other users. So let's say you have um, perhaps somewhat of a more confidential scenario you want to spin up. Could be an acquisition, could be something related with workforce. You can spin it up, have it even be hidden from other power users where you will be the only one who can see it. And then in the options box, just how far uh, out into the future you want to go, your three-year plans, five-year plans, 10-year plans, all easily done with the selection from a drop-down menu. Now, we'll leave it as this, since that's just a carbon copy of our baseline budget. And upon save, we're going to place it right here in this folder underneath our budget, and we are ready to go and use this scenario. Folder structure available, add as many folders. If you do end up with hundreds of versions, it will help you stay nice and neat and clean in your uh, organizing of your different versions. So, but that let's pivot into planning. Now that we have set us up with that what if scenario that we were just asked to create, let's go into planning uh, and walk through um, how easy it is to use those sheets. Uh, user friendliness um, to it and show you the interface and how you interact with those sheets to be able to make those adjustments. Now, from our workday icon, just in review, planning in adaptive is done in the area of sheets and assumptions. I know you've heard me say the word sheets a few times, but when you think of the term sheets, if you haven't heard it before and haven't seen any adaptive YouTube videos, um, Sheets are basically like tabs in an Excel workbook. You can have as many as you need to do your planning at a granular level. Now, when you first purchase work adaptive planning, it will come with a PL, balance sheet, cash flow, um, workforce, and a capex out of the box, but they get fully configured to how you need to see your, your um, financials. So, as I hover over my sheets here, let's open up a few of them because we're going to need them in our next exercise. You can see I have a few different um, sheets where I'm doing my detailed modeling. And then within my driver sheets, I also have global um, driver sheets where I'm holding drivers to help me in my modeling within my sheets. Now, um, I know we're going to need this one. And let's start with this and our occupancy schedule and perhaps our staffing as well. So let's get started with. Um, rearranging them up there at the top a little bit. Okay, so here's what a sheet looks like. Now, this is an example of a sheet that I wanted to start us with because it is uh, a very simple um, P&L look like sheet. Now, top right-hand corner, the very first thing we're gonna do, we spun up that scenario and now immediately it's available for us to use make any changes, compare it against that baseline budget before we actually commit to it and know if we're happy with those changes we're making. Now, anytime we make any changes in adaptive, you always have to be at the bottom level. Let's take a look at property one. In this what if scenario, this is our PL on our left hand side here. What we're looking at are uh, some stat accounts, such as the rooms that are available. We have uh, our occupied rooms, the percentages for occupation, uh, and then getting to our revenue per available room. In row number eight here is our room revenue. Now you can see that it is a gray cell with a little blue triangle in the bottom right corner. Now what that means is that this is coming from another sheet where the modeling is done at a more detailed level. Now, if we take a step back, this is a more summarized P&L for property one, but the modeling for this is done on our daily staffing schedule, uh, actually on our daily occupancy. Now, you may have heard me say the cell explorer will become your best friend. It really will be your best friend. You either will know where, where it's coming from or the cell explorer can always directly take you to where we're modeling that point. So here's our 270,000 uh, 
Um, and then we can see by the daily revenue on the right hand side here, and it's modeled on our daily occupancy schedule. So two ways to get to it via your cell explore. How are we actually modeling for that revenue? If we scoot over to the right a little bit, and I went a little too far. So we're doing the modeling for January. There's our 272,000 on this daily occupancy. So this is where the configuration of revenue modeling will happen because you may not be doing it this way. This is just an example of what adaptive, what these sheets could look like for you. We're taking a look at the rooms that are available in row number two. We're taking a look at the rooms that have been sold. Now these are all coming from other additional places or some formula or some logic. Like in this example for the number of rooms sold, we're taking a look at, well, how many rooms did we sell exactly on the same day a year ago? Let's increase that by 5%. That is what we're forecasting for January 31st, 2018. And then applying some uh, occupancy percent um, calculations, the average daily rent, and then getting to our revenue for each individual day that then gets us to a total um, monthly revenue. Another concept here uh, to talk about is time stratum. If you need to do your modeling down to the day level, the detailed granular modeling, you can absolutely do that by having uh, a daily time stratum and then rolling it up though to a full uh, monthly schedule like on a PL. So uh, let's move on from revenue modeling. So we have additional sheets where we're doing the modeling all the way down to each individual day by the properties um, using some formula logic and some assumptions to get to that room revenue. Now, if we had more time, I'd walk you through some of these other examples I have where we're calculating perhaps we have some laundry valet service uh, revenue, some movie commission, vending machines, you name it. Now, all of these individual lines you see here or just an example, think of these as what you are doing today for revenue modeling. They will come to this summarized P&L, but they can be modeled on additional supporting schedules. Now, I do wanna make some changes in this what if version. Let's, uh, let's move down to our salaries, our expense category here. Um, as you can see in my example, my model here, I have some I have property manager salaries, assistant manager, sales coordinators, again, just a different variety of expenses that I am tracking. In row number 32, I have my housekeepers here, um, 3,138 uh, for the expense for the month of January. Now, I know that we're gonna have to increase our rates for our housekeepers. It's been very hard to maintain our housekeepers. Um, we need to increase their rate. And let's take a look at what that would look like if we did that and what the impact our bottom line would be. Now, I know I have opened up um, the sheet, but let's use our cell explorer again. And it pops over to my other screen. Let's bring it over here for you guys to see. There is that data point again and it's coming from our property staffing sheet. Now let's take a look at what I have on this property staffing. Let's make this bigger for all of you to see better on your screen. Now, as you can see on our left-hand side, there are front, front desk service reps. Um, here are our housekeepers. So we're looking at the, um, we're looking at a calculation of our housekeepers, the hours required multiplied by the number of uh, what the rate is. Now on this detailed modeling, let's say we're gonna change that $14. Let's, let's do a significant change to $25 an hour. We are in a what if scenario. Um, let's see what would happen. We can always spin up another one, change it to a lower rate or higher rate even, and then compare against each other. So as soon as we hit save here on this sheet, what's gonna happen behind the scenes is in real time, a trickle effect is gonna go in place where everything is going to get recalculated for you that's using this new updated rate for housekeepers and recalculate everything for you uh, all in real time, all the way up to your consolidated financials. Let's close out the sheet. 
here's our $3,138. A quick refresh on this sheet here is going to present us what that new expense is for housekeepers. So let's go back down, uh, row 32, there it is. So we went from that um, about 3,000 to almost 6,000 in expense on housekeepers by just adjusting the, the rate. Um, Work adaptive planning refers to this as the elastic hypercube technology. It's a big fancy word, but all it really means is that you make a change in one place, be it to a formula or to a driver uh, or anything in your sheets, and you will see the real-time effect because it doesn't need to go through an entire model batch process. It only picks up the change that you made and represents the results to you in that real time uh, time frame. While we're here looking at time, we have just a little bit more time to spend on here. If we scroll through um, a little bit down, um, let's make a couple more ex uh, changes, maybe to some expense items here, uh, maybe within our direct expense here for supplies. Another example, row 62, we have some office supplies. Any hotels or uh, event centers, medical services centers, um, you think of um, um, anything in the hospitality environment is going to have uh, an office type of related expense, uh, direct expense here. So we're taking a, taking a look at, okay, how many rooms do we have occupied? Multiplying it by an assumption for the supplies that we're holding um, for, uh, for office. Again, you sell explore, but we also have this open in our all assumption. The rooms occupied we saw earlier is about 2,926 from our sheet earlier. And hopping over to that driver sheet, just to give you a taste of what that driver sheet looks like. Let's scroll actually up to the top here. On your driver sheet, it will get fully customized to what we need on that driver sheet to be able to do our modeling. Now you could have the days in the month the days in the year, if you're doing it down to the day modeling, you may want to do that. Um, as you can see, I have my FICAS, my, my FUDA, my um, unemployment tax percentages here as well. And then here are my different um, type of drivers for my staffing hours. There's the office supplies that we're using. We're taking 13 cents per room for the number of rooms occupied. So if you make a change to your driver, it will automatically re-trickle into, um, into your uh, P&L balance sheet cash flow where you can then immediately see the impact. So let's take a pause here um, and pivot over into reporting. Uh, I know I've shown you uh, a little bit of how the sheets are interconnected, how you make a change in one place. It connects to your um, summarized sheet where you wanna actually see the impact, but all of these sheets can be connected. You can do the planning at a granular level if you need to, or perhaps you wanna do your planning at a much, much higher level. Perhaps you're doing a top-down, a bottoms up. This is more of a bottoms up approach. You want to start with a top-down when you first get into your budget, kind of set your targets, and then push it out to your teams, have them take a look at doing the bottoms up and then getting close to your top uh, down plans. So all of that is capable um, and doable here within Adaptive, but I wanted to show you a little bit more at the detailed level of um, how these sheets are interconnected to be able to use them in very user-friendly, easy to use sheets, make the inputs, your formula wizard, um, right-click. Actually, let's open up the formula with wizard so you can quickly get a, gl a glimpse of what it looks like. There is no coding with work adaptive planning. That is one thing I absolutely love when I use this as a senior analyst. Um, in the world of Excel, we are all used to referencing. We're referencing cells, we're referencing tabs. In adaptive, it's business language. Um, it's the Excel syntax, so there's really no coding. And then you're referencing within your model. In this example, we're taking the account for the rooms occupied multiplied by the assumption that we have for our supplies. Super easy. What we take a crawl, walk, run approach, we'll, we'll make sure you're crawling, but with basic Excel knowledge, you will be running before you're crawling. Um, 
easy to use, and then you'll have the recorded session on this as well. So I just wanted to pull it up while, while we were on here. And then in your top blue ribbon here on any of your sheets, you always have your display options available to you as well. So again, back to the user interface and how you interact and what the feel is like on your sheets. Uh, you can easily bring in your quarters. You can have spark lines. You may have seen some spark lines. I had them up on, a, on another sheet. Um, spark lines, some customers really love them. If you're that visual user. Now you have a little graphic right here as well. You have your SGNA type of accounts. Um, and then you have in green fonted data, your actual data that comes from your ERP. And then all of your out, your, your budget, your rolling forecast data. So a little bit more on uh, what it actually looks like for the, for the user and how um, you can use additional um, items to kind of make it more flexible and uh, adjust the view of how you want to view it. Now let's pivot into reporting. I do want to leave a few minutes towards the end for questions. Now that we've made, um, well, we actually only ended up making one change for um, increasing the rates, which, which is good. I just want to make sure we have at least some change made so we can see a variance. Now within reports, um, these are just my favorite reports. You can create as many as you need, pin them to your favorite. You will always be able to quickly access them here, or you can always go into your overview that will get you into your folder structure. Now we've spun up that new scenario that we were asked by our executives, um, increasing the rates. Now let's take a look at this variance report. Now I have two versions, I have my budget, and let's pivot this one to our what if, that's what we wanna compare. Now, all the variances are going to be zero because we only made one change. And it's obviously a negative change here. We are at a negative impact of 27,000 here, as you can see in our salaries category. Now, this is a web-based report. Um, similar concept as with dashboards. This is the second main bucket of reporting. When you think about reporting in work adaptive planning, it is on the web. It is drag and drop, just like dashboards, you drag and drop all these different individual items into your report, create the variance columns, um, easy to create on here. You can apply some additional conditional formatting, kind of add um, colored flags, arrows, kind of let the system tell you where the hot buttons are. And while you're on the web here, um, they're all interactive. Just like the dashboards you saw me do a drill through, slice and dice, all of that is available to you here as well. So if you take a look at this housekeeper, for example, if you click on that bottom level housekeeper row, because, hey, we're seeing this large increase and we got this report. Now let's see which department or um, which property, uh, which is from your level hierarchy, your, your structure. And we can see it's in property one. Also, that's where we made the change for property one. So slice and dice capability, drill through on your reports, they're not static. Top right-hand corner, let's go back to our, um, our undrilled report. And then not to um, keep talking about the Cell Explorer, but drill through is always available. A Cell Explorer, you won't go any more than this. You've already seen it quite a few times. It's always available on the report as well. Scrolling through here, um, any of these rows you see here are just dragged and dropped onto this report because that's what I want to see on this variance report. Now, you can have your balance sheet on here, you can have your cash flow, you can have financial metrics, operational metrics, all on one report like this, one page, one view. We could have additional um, columns, not just a budget and a what if. We could have as many columns as you need, as many variance columns, and then also being able to write a variance commentary here. So if we save this report now that we have it refreshed, let's say for the housekeeper here, we wanna add that note and say, increase rates due to whatever the reason may be. Um, click okay. There is our variance commentary. You can share this, um, export this into um, Excel, download into PDF, do a save as, a snapshot, 
you can go into edit mode here, go behind the scenes, drag and drop additional items into here as well. So let's pivot for our last few minutes here together and pivot into our third main bucket of reporting, which is the Office Connect. Now, earlier I mentioned that Office Connect is more used for board style reporting. Customers get a choice. Uh, you can use it for more board style reporting, but you can also just use it for ad hoc reporting. It's all a choice that is given to you. Um, some customers prefer to just stay on the web and do their drag and drop, do ad hoc reporting, um, and some prefer to do it in the Office Connect. So let's walk through an example that I have prepared for us here. This is uh, an Excel workbook of about 12 tabs and the Office Connect uh, Microsoft Office add-in. So it integrates with PowerPoint and Word. If you are doing any Word type presentations as well, you can absolutely do that. Use the Office Connect to automate it for you and really give back a lot of that time to you in your day-to-day. -day. So we can actually be analysts. Um, I remember using this um, back as a senior analyst and um, the automation of it, the time that I had left at the end of the day to not have to copy and paste all of my columns for the next month's worth of actuals, it was a tremendous um, benefit and help. So let's see, Let, let's give you a quick presentation of what Office Connect actually can do for you at a 10,000 foot view. So I just highlighted my linked cells. Linked cells just shows you everything that comes from directly from Adaptive and is linked. Here, the blue cells are coming from Adaptive. These are all data points being pulled out of Adaptive. Green are your labels also coming out of Adaptive. If we highlight our task pane here, this is our structure within, uh, within our model. As you can see, it's right here on our left-hand side. And to connect to your Excel workbooks, let's say taxes and benefits here, I purposely unhooked them so that they were not connected. So you can kind of see what it looks like to connect them. Taxes and benefits through other expense will go into our GL account structure. You also have a search box available. And let's see, there is other expense, um, drag and drop functionality again. And I grabbed the wrong accounts here. So taxes and benefits through other expense. And drag and drop, and then you'll see those individual cells turn blue. So now we've established a connection. If we do a refresh on our top left-hand corner, just on this tab, what it's gonna do now, it's gonna go look at your model on the web and pull in your data points. So it really gives you that confidence in your day-to-day -day when you do your reporting for your month and close, for your week, for um, your what-if scenarios, whatever that reporting package looks like for you, or even your ad hoc reporting. You don't have to worry about, are my data points coming from the correct place? Did I link it to the right place? Did I link it to the correct book? If you think about the example we walked through, making the change on, uh, on the rates for a housekeeper, and then being able to compare the two scenarios against each other. In the world of Excel, it, it, it can be very painful when you have to go between two models and then trying to link to do that reporting. But then adaptive, it's just dragging and dropping your different versions on a report, refreshing, and it's all connected for you. So uh, earlier today, before our demonstration here, because I knew I was going to run out of time on data integration, I actually brought data into my model for, uh, in this specific model for uh, April. So if I could ask you all to keep your eyes on columns I, K, and M, we're looking at the month of March of 2023. I am in, in my second demo model here. I know earlier the other demo model you were looking at 2018. I brought data in for the month of April. Now, within your workbook properties in your top left-hand corner here, I have set my time here to relative. What that allows me to do is to be able to have the system uh, roll the book forward automatically. This time around, let's go through all of our 12 tabs. If you have a, a workbook or a report, a reporting package, that's perhaps 50 tabs long or, or 100 tabs. I hope not, but if it is, Imagine using Office Connect and automating 
automatically update rolling that book forward for you. So as you can see, column I, K, and M all changed to the month of April and everything got rolled forward. We were starting earlier here in column D with October. Now we are at November. Just to give you a, a glimpse of the different types of tabs I have, so you can kind of get a taste of what you can all do. It's really native Excel functionality. Anything you can do in Excel today, you can do with the Office Connect um, formatting wise, uh, graphically with your charts, your visuals, it's all using Excel, native Excel functionality, but the data for those charts, graphs, uh, is all coming from adaptive. Let me hide that task pane. So as you can see, I have a chart tab. I'm using Excel, but the data for these charts is pulled out of adaptive. I have a different departmental PL. Um, as you can see, my balance sheet, my cash flow, you name it. Um, these are all as an example to kind of illustrate that. You also have this option of repeating reports. Let's say you wanted to, um, in your standard package, you have it at your total consolidated um, company, but you want the system to be able to um, produce it for you for all of your different properties that you have. Let's say for property one, two, and three. As I click those individual properties, it's going to automatically reproduce that PL for those properties for me in that exact same format. I know in, in the world of finance, we always have a unique audience or a different audience. One property manager wants to see it one way, one wants to see it another way. You can do that as well via um, your reusable reports on the web. So there are lots of different options that you have um, as far as reporting goes. So last but not least, um, to show you the connectivity to, um, to PowerPoint. Let's open up our PowerPoint here. The PowerPoint looks at your Excel workbook. And I call this our easy button here up at the top. It's just the click of an easy button. And then it links into your Excel workbook. Whatever we have in our Excel is what will get pulled into um, PowerPoint. Quick hop through a few of these. So now again, back to, you know, we want to be analysts. We want to be able to tell the story of what is actually going on in the business. We want to be able to help make decisions, help drive the business forward and not copying and pasting columns and ticking and tying data. All of that work is done for you by work the adaptive planning. So all these tables are linked to your Excel and picking it up directly from your database, um, from the web model. Scrolling through a few more here, as you can see here on slide number eight, I have our highlights on still. Quick pivot back, we take our highlight off. Let's say even here on our revenue, um, this is, let's say you have different revenue streams that roll up to that total revenue. Now you can always expand, collapse, you can expand all, expand to leaf level, and there is a lot to do that can help you speed up in your day-to-day -day reporting. So as you can see, I just added three more rows in this Excel. I did not have to copy paste any of my formatting and rearranging, that was all done for me. So it did not break my formatting. We pivot back to our PowerPoint, a quick refresh, and you can see that new update all in real time. So I know I talked a lot, but I want to help you imagine if you were doing any type of scenario planning in your business today, in your industry. I know this is hospitality related. So I've been referencing hotels um, um, and other like event center type of organizations, but this is made for really any type of organization. Um, any type of business, it all gets configured to, um, to how you do your planning and what are your requirements for um, reporting, planning, uh, and what you want to see. And it's all made for the Office of Finance. Uh, like I said, I was an ex-user. Uh, I am an ex-user of work the adaptive planning and have only great things to say. But at this point, this is all I had prepared for our demo here today. And I will um, take a pause. Um, I know Scott has been keeping an eye on chat. If there are other questions, happy to address them. Um, but I'll hand it back over to, to Dane to kind of close us up. 
Thank you, Josiah. I did want to check in, Scott. Do we have any questions in the chat we can address? Uh, 